Welcome back to Battleground Blitz Tactics. This is a series that gives an in-depth breakdown of every battleground in the new BG Blitz mode and will give you strategies and tips that'll help you win your games more often. Last episode, I put out a community poll to vote for the next map, and in a poll of 39 votes, Temple of Kapmogu had a clear majority. There will be another community post following the release of this episode, so make sure to vote for which map you'd like to see me cover next. Temple of Kotmogu, I'd argue, is the most infamous map of the soon-to-be nine maps in the pool, as although this map seems simple to win on paper, it can feel very lopsided as to which team comes out victorious, and the lack of a catch-up mechanic can make this battleground feel extremely frustrating. Despite this, there is still room for solo playmaking potential, and I've got some information that can help give you the edge you need. Without further ado, let's jump into the Battleground Blitz tactics. Alrighty everybody, so today we'll be taking a look at the Temple of Kotmogu. This is a resource race map consisting of four orbs in each quadrant of the map that your team can pick up to obtain points, and the first team to 1500 resources wins the game. Let's take a look at the changes from the normal Temple of Kotmogu mode to the Battleground Blitz version of the Temple of Kotmogu, and that is similar to Silver Shard Mines, there are no changes, allegedly. To the fundamental game mode itself however from discussing with other players and from testing myself i did notice that the point values of holding the orbs have been increased throughout the map and we'll talk a little bit more about this later when i break down the point value specifically but do know that this actually does change your strategy and decision making and allows you to make more risky plays despite this being a very subtle change at first and this is due to the combination of this change paired with the lack of change in another regard which we'll talk about now. So there are two ways for your team to get points in the Temple of Kotmogu, and that is through holding orbs directly. And I put killing orb carriers, but I meant to say killing other players in general, because regardless if that player is carrying an orb or not, you will get 10 points for killing that player. And this was the thing that I was talking about that did not get changed or modified in any way, is that killing other players still stays at 10 points. They did not buff it to 15 or even 20, but on the bright side, this essentially means that you don't have to win every single team fight to win this game. And I can get a little bit more into that regarding the strategy itself. So regarding point values is that teams will gain points for every tick that they are holding orbs for. Ticks will occur every five seconds. It's important to note when I say that ticks occur every five seconds is that it's not every five seconds from teams picking up the orbs. It is just every five seconds on a set interval. So if one tick happens and you happen to pick up an orb like three seconds later, then you will get the points for your team in two seconds as opposed to having to wait a full five. And what I'm trying to get at here is that it doesn't matter when you pick up the orb within the tick, so long as you're holding it when the tick actually hits, you will still get the points for your team. So let's talk about the point values when you're actually holding the orb each time the ticks occur. And these are as follows. If you are in the middle of the map, it will be worth eight points. If you are in the outer temple ring, it'll be worth six points. And if you are near the graveyards, it'll be about four points. The only place where I know to my knowledge that it's zero points is if you try to hold it inside a spawn room, but I'm not sure if that's changed throughout Blitz because I have not tested that. So if you'd like a visual as to what that would look like or what I'm talking about when I say the middle, the outer ring, the graveyard area, this is what I'm referring to. And something that's really cool too is that the bottom half of the stairs where that sort of ledge is uh, that I marked within that red border you can actually stand on that bottom half and still get points for being in the middle it's important to note that these values are the buffed values because the normal mode you would only get six for being in the middle ring four on the outer and two in the graveyards or at least in the rbg format prior to bg blitz being a thing that's how it operated another thing to note about point values is that if a team is holding all four orbs for 45 seconds their point values will increase by about four times and the team holding all four orbs will get a massive burst of points while this is important to know to make sure that you're doing everything that you can to ensure that the enemy team does not have all four orbs at the same time think of this like a mercy rule i know that when i used to play little league baseball there was a mercy rule in place where if a team had 10 more points than another team in the inning and the other team was not able to close that gap the game would automatically end there and it's not so much like oh it's automatically going to end but it is a mechanic that closes out the games quickly if one team is just dominating the other team so let's talk about carrying the orb itself for orb carriers whenever you are carrying the orb for a certain amount of time you will receive a stacking buff and debuff is kind of how it works where you deal increased damage but you also receive increased damage and in addition to receiving increased damage you also receive decreased healing if you saw my warsaw gulch guide or my capture the flag guides you would know this functions very similarly to the brutal assault debuff 
But the trade-off is, is that you get to do a buttload of damage as well. And again, I put that this is just something that starts off minor, but increases quickly to the point where it basically becomes unhealable. And the only thing that could maybe have a sliver of saving you is a damage reduction cooldown. So rather than doing this in the map review itself, something I wanted to put was the power up locations. And I'll go ahead and wiggle my mouse around here just to show you. So here are where the power ups are located. Similarly to the normal Temple of Kotmogu mode, you have both of your Berserker buffs on the north and south side. In the middle of the map right here, I marked with a red X. Additionally, you have your Leafs, which restore both health and mana. These will be very important for your healers. On these little ledges, but next to every single orb, so there will be four leaves. Additionally, the new power-ups, which have been added within the Battleground Blitz mode, are these two shield buffs that I've marked here with a yellow X. So they will be on the south side right here near the blue orb, in the north side here near the purple orb, in the middle. This will be really good if you're an orb carrier specifically, because this gives you a shield equivalent to about 50% of your health. So if you're like a tank and you're carrying an orb and you pick up one of these shields, oh, it is just it is so, so, so good. Highly recommend cheating towards one of these shield buffs if you are an orb carrier. All right, now that we've got all the basics out of the way, let's talk about winning Kot Mogu in general. The best strategy will vary dependent on how the opener plays out because you really don't know if your team is going to outright win the first team fight or if you're going to lose and then you have to switch up the strategy from there. Even though this battleground seems like a hot mess, the two main ways of winning this battleground are either going to be through winning team fights or through kiting with orbs. But it doesn't matter as much which strategy you take so long as you are carrying the orbs. I know some people, they're like, oh, I'm team fight oriented and I've absolutely got to just, just kill the enemy all the time. Well, that's good and all, but if you're getting your team like maybe 10, 20 points from killing one or two people here and there, when you could be carrying an orb, you are actively throwing the game for your team. And I have seen so many teams throw this game outright from just fighting in the middle. So try to keep that in mind. If you are going to win team fights, you also got to be carrying the orbs. Let's talk about role responsibility for a second. In my previous guides, I broke down like, oh, tank and healer and melee DPS and range DPS and stealth as to like what you should be doing if you are each and every role. I do have some pointers here and there for certain roles, but the, essentially in Kotmogu, it doesn't matter as much because all eight of you are going to be doing the same objective. So for everybody, pick up the orbs and don't die. It seems simple, and I know I put a little asterisk next to the word pick up orbs because there are some caveats to it, but the absolute best thing you can do for your team, regardless of what role you are, is to pick up an orb. If there is an orb available, the best thing you can do to block the enemy team from getting points is to get to that orb before they do. I cannot stress this enough. Now, there are a few caveats that I have for some specific roles. Specifically, let's talk about the healer first. So if you were a healer in raided battlegrounds or a healer in battlegrounds in general, you were taught, if you at least learned the correct way, that a healer should never pick up an orb in the Temple of Katmogu. This should always be a DPS or a tank thing to worry about because, you know, you really don't want your healers to die. It's like a waste of resources. And if you did pick up an orb as a healer, you were like called slurs from your team. That is not the case in Battleground Blitz due to the fact that both teams lose two people off the bat. So... On a team of eight people, if your team happens to control all four orbs or even is considering the possibility of controlling all four orbs, four of the people on your team are going to have to carry an orb. And keeping it real, when you're in a solo queue environment, not everybody on your team is going to be playing optimally. Things are going to be chaotic. And as a healer, desperate times can call for desperate measures. So I'm going to take a bit of a controversial stance and say that it is totally okay for one of the healers to be carrying an orb at a time, so long as you are careful as to ensuring that, again, only one healer is carrying the orb. You really don't want both of them carrying the orb because both healers being wiped means that there's nobody healing your team and you're going to be on a split res and it's just going to be bad news. But again, due to the chaotic nature of the solo queue environment, I really don't see the issue with you picking up an orb. And as a healer myself, I, there have been moments where I've been able to help contribute to my team with victory points by holding the orb for a certain amount of time. Something else that you can do as well is that as you start to climb up the ranks, you'll start to get to the point where DPS players will not let you drink and they'll not let you get to the leaf buffs to reset your mana. So something that you can do to apply pressure to the enemy team is if you are out of mana and if you do notice that you're getting stopped and people are not letting you reset, you can grab an orb and they will be forced to kill you because they either have to kill you and give you a reset to get your mana back or 
you are going to consistently get points for your team by holding the orb. So that's a little cheeky strat that you could do. I uh, would not recommend doing that all the time, especially if you're still a bit newer to blitz or healing in general. But I just thought that I'd throw this in. The other note in this guide that I have is for my range DPS, which is that orbs will generally be the best on you. And here's why. Whenever you pick up an orb as a ranged DPS, you will get the stacking debuff, right? You'll take more damage, you'll receive less healing, but you will do more damage as well. And if you are a ranged DPS, it is possible for you to be doing damage to the enemy team without the enemy team doing damage back to you. If you're using your tools properly, like your roots and your slows and your kiting and your mobility and such, you can keep melee DPS off of you and you can melt them before they're even able to touch you. This is not possible for melee DPS because they have to be in melee range to get their damage off. And so because of this, out of everybody on your team, out of the tank, out of the healers, out of the melee DPS, the orbs will be the most beneficial for you. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get over to the map review where we'll talk about some sample strategies, the opener, and some other good stuff. All right, everybody, welcome to the MS Paint segment of this guide. So before we go into the opener and the general strategies for Temple of Katmogu, the first thing I want to talk to you about is what happens if you die? That's a scary question, but the answer is, at least on this map, is that you will spawn at one of two graveyards of your faction, and the position of where your graveyards are are also determined by the faction that you are playing as. If you are the Alliance, your graveyards will spawn at the north side of the map, next to the orange orb and the purple orb respectively, and if you are a Horde, your graveyards will spawn next to the blue orb and the green orb respectively. You're probably wondering, okay, well, how do I determine what graveyard I spawn at? Is it random each time? Is there some sort of variable that goes into play? And the answer is there actually is a variable that goes into play. If I were to take this yellow line right here and I draw it down the center of the map to the best of my ability, and this applies for the whole map, not just, you know, this little center area, depending on which side of this yellow line that I die will dictate what graveyard I go to. And this is because if you die on a certain point of the map, you will spawn on the opposite graveyard of the point of which you die. So if I am an Alliance member right here and I die on the purple side of the map, I will spawn at the orange graveyard. If I am a horde member and I die on the blue side of the map, I will spawn at the green graveyard. And this can be good to maybe find an opportunity to regroup and push with your team, but it's not something that's super major, at least when you're starting out. I don't even think this will be a major factor as to like min maxing the battleground until a much higher rating. So I included this in this video because I do think this is something you should know, but understand that this is not super critical to your strategy, at least at the moment. So with that out of the way, we will talk about the two strategies. So if your team goes for a team fight strategy, let's say that you are the Alliance in this instance, the gates open and what should immediately happen is you should pick up two orbs. I know if you are an RBG player, a lot of the strategy would be to not pick up orbs in general and try to go for the team fight first, see how the team fight plays out, and then pick up orbs after because picking up orbs before the first team fight's foolish. But due to the point value increase, with each orb giving you six points per tick when you're in this general area and fighting, or eight points per tick if you're in the middle, it's absolutely foolish to not pick up the orbs. The game pace of Battleground Blitz is way too quick for you to afford to just completely ignore the orbs in the opener. So what you'll do is you will immediately pick up the two orbs and then you want to fight on the side of the map that is closest to your graveyards. So if you are the Alliance, you want to look to push towards the top side of the map. And if you are the Horde, you are going to want to look to push towards the bottom side of the map. Why do we want to fight on our side with the graveyards? That is because our orb carriers are eventually going to go down, right? This debuff will get to like 360 stacks. And at that point, our orb carriers will get sneezed on and they will die. So it's imperative that we are closer to their graveyard to where they will have a shorter distance to run to reinforce the remainder of the team or to reinforce the new orb carriers. Because in this map, having more numbers than the enemy team is just going to be so critical to winning the team fights, to putting the enemy team on a split res. And even with as something as simple as positioning, you want to be doing everything you can to set yourself up for success. And if you're the Horde, I'll circle the Horde with the yellow pin right here, the same principle would apply, right? You would go, you would pick up both orbs, and then you would fight on your side of the map that's closer to the graveyards, which in your case would be the bottom side of the map. 
Something that's really cool too is that if you're an orb carrier and you're trying to get to your side of the map where the graveyards are, you can actually just jump through the middle here and pick up the shield buff for your team. And this will help you survive a little bit as you are pushing towards your own side of the map. I thought that was really cool with the positioning of it through that way. I don't know if Blizzard did that intentionally when it came to the shield buffs. And again, I'll go ahead and mark them here with the yellow X's. But I thought it was pretty cool. So again, if you are picking the team fight strategy, what you want to be doing is you want to be fighting on your side of the map. And you're going to be looking to eliminate the enemy orb carriers as quick as possible. There will be some other targets that stick out, such as squishy melee DPS like rep paladins, or maybe there's a caster that's out of position that you can kill. And every kill does matter to an extent. I mean, you know, 10 points is nothing to scoff at. But you're going to be looking to apply pressure to the enemy orb carriers, and you're going to be wanting to send people out to do resets. Personally, I think the orb carrier that has the higher priority of the two will be the orb that is closer to your graveyard when you spawn. And so to visualize this, I'll just go ahead and put these orbs like up here off screen. So we've got the blue orb and we've got the orange orb. And then the horde is going to have the purple orb and they're going to have the green orb. The first thing we want to do is prioritize killing this target that is carrying the purple orb and rotating to go and pick up that orb the second that it drops. We do not want there to be a lot of downtime where there are orbs available on the map to be grabbed. We want to be keeping the flow of the game pace, or otherwise known as the tempo, moving as quick as possible. We want to be leveraging every advantage possible, and we want to be taking advantage of those good situations we're putting our team in to further drive the game towards a victory for us. So let's say in this scenario, we do get the purple orb carrier down and we do pick up the purple orb. Well, then that's three orbs for us. And then all we have to do is try to fight for mid if we can win the team fight. Else, if we cannot win the team fight, we'll, we'll want to be going for the kiting strategy. And we'll be trying to hold these three orbs for as long as possible. Again, our orb carriers will die. So it's important that you're tracking the stacks on your own orb carrier. If you have an add on like battleground enemies, this should be pretty easy to do. But you want to be tracking your own orb carrier stacks and then getting ready to rotate whenever they die so that you're essentially refreshing the stacks for your team. But even if we get all those orbs, it's important that we are playing on our side of the map right here. If we're going in the middle, we're on this top side in the middle. If we're going to play the outer ring, we're on this top side of the outer ring. We are not down here closer to the enemy graveyards. Well, what happens if the team fight doesn't go so well? All right, well, let's say that you were the Alliance again in this scenario and you go out, you pick up the two orbs, you play the right strategy. You know, you try to go for the purple team orb carrier and you're playing on the top side of the map. You're doing everything like a good little noodle who has watched this guide and your team gets wiped. Maybe you have a healer that goes down and from that momentum, the enemy team is able to just kill you all one by one by one. The thing that you should do is not try to immediately stagger out coming in from the graveyard that is the easiest way you can lose the game for your team is by being put what's called on a split res where you constantly have teammates dying and trying to revive and the team that is on the split res is never able to regroup and push and so they're never able to kill the orb carriers that's the quickest way you can lose the game for your team is getting put on a split res you will want to revive at whatever graveyard you're at so either you know orange or purple if you're on the alliance you'll want to group up when you do group up, it's important that you don't go through the middle necessarily because then you'll be putting yourself in harm's way, but you'll want to get yourself as close to your allies as possible by coming through these top entrances right here, back onto your side of the map, and you're just going to be targeting orb carriers. Whenever you can get a hold of orbs, if you can rotate to the orbs in time before the enemy team gets there, pick them up, you'll want to hold them, and then you'll want to kite on this outer ring of the map. Unless your team is severely lacking damage, there will be a point where you can kill the enemy team orb carrier and you can take three orbs and just hold them hostage outside, right? If they are holding one orb in the middle right here, they're getting eight points per tick. But if you are able to hold three orbs on the outside, you will get six points per tick, six points per tick, six points per tick. And in theory, you could just use these pillars to line of sight. You could use this pillar to line of sight. You've got so many good options for breaking line of sight and stopping damage from happening to yourself to where you are getting, if I just remove all these numbers and extraneous stuff on the screen, where you are getting 18 points per tick compared to the enemy team's eight. Again, this isn't factoring in kills or anything, but 
you will still be at a heavy advantage if you're able to hold those three orbs on the outside. There have been plenty of times where my team has absolutely sucked at the team fight. Where my team has been dog water. Where all six of my DPS have had less damage than all six of the enemy team's DPS. But we were still able to win because we targeted the orb carriers at the right times. We were able to get the orbs back. We were able to use these outside ring barriers to our advantage to break line of sight and hold these orbs. While the enemy team just sat in the middle waiting for us to come and get blended. Because of this, we were able to build a steady lead and come back from what was going to be an initial loss. How we decided to not just kite around and go for orbs. And look, while I understand that the easiest strategy to win this game is to win the team fight, and this map will heavily favor teams that can win team fights, it is still possible for you to win the game if you play the right strategy. And I will acknowledge that kiting is the much more difficult strategy to execute, but understand that. Even if things are looking grim, there is a way that you can come out on top in this map. I think a big reason why people have such an aversion to this map is that there is no catch up mechanic that's built in. So if you do get to a point where the enemy team's holding all four orbs and they get the bonus, the game's basically over. You will find yourself in some games where it is just absolutely hopeless. Your team doesn't kite, your team doesn't pick up orbs, your team just wants to team deathmatch in the middle. And unfortunately, you just have to eat that as one of those 30% losses. But in a good portion of these games, there are still ways that you can come back and bring this around for your team. With that out of the way, let's go over a few general tips. And then I do have a VOD review that I would like to go over regarding the Temple of Katmogu. All right, so moving on to the general tips portion of the video, I've only got a few for you today because some of these are gonna be repeats of what I've talked about earlier in the map review. And I figured that I would try to keep this section condensed because I feel like you would get more value of me showing you some principles as opposed to just talking at you or having you just listen to this video in the background. But for general tips on the Temple of Katmogu, the first thing I want you to know is that orbs will always take priority over kills. And this is due to the stealth changes in the battleground blitz mode when it comes to the points that you get from carrying the orb. If you've ever played the Temple of Kotmogu in the raided battleground mode, you would know that if you are in a situation where you pick up the orb and you know that you're going to die a few seconds later, that would be considered absolutely stupid and your team would call you out for it. However, because the value of a kill is still only worth 10 points, whereas being able to hold an orb for two ticks or 10 seconds, in the zone that you picked it up would be worth the equivalent of 12 points, it actually would be worth it to pick up an orb knowing that you're about to die if you can live for 10 seconds. So rather than having to think about, oh, should I pick up an orb here? Should I not? The answer is 99% of the time, yes, pick up the damn orb. <laughs> Sorry to put it so bluntly. Moving on to the next tip is to group up and push with your team. As I've mentioned earlier in the map review portion of this video, the quickest way you can lose this game is to get put on a split res. Split res wasn't necessarily as lethal when it came to the 10v10 mode because you could still make things work with some small groups if you had like two or three hitting an orb carrier, but due to the nature of there only being eight people per team, being put on a split res timer is that much more detrimental to your team's success because each person on the stagger contributes a greater percentage of that team. And the last tip I've got for y'all, which I did go a little bit into earlier on the map review, is to play on the side that favors your graveyards. Again, this makes it easier for you to group up, it allows for a quicker response time, and it gives you a safer place to kite should you be in the position that you're carrying the orb yourself. Here's a visual again, illustrating that it is generally safer for the Alliance to play on the top side of the map, where it is generally safer for the Horde to play on the bottom side of the map. So the last thing I want to do for today before we close out the guide is I do want to go over a VOD review of myself playing the Temple of Katmogu on the Battleground Blitz mode. This recording specifically is from August 15th, so it was during the pre-patch, but a lot of the principles will still apply going into the War Within. When we're looking at this VOD, we're going to be specifically looking at macro play. So what is macro play? Macro play is the overall decision making in objective based play compared to the micro play, which more has to do with the mechanics of your class, your cooldown usage, your crowd control, that sort of stuff. I make a ton of errors with my micro play. And, and if we were looking at the micro play, this guide would be hours long, but we don't want that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the game. We are going to be the Alliance side. A common mistake that a lot of people make is they just see blindly where the enemy team's going and they clash on that side. Don't do that. 
you want to be going to the side that's closer to your graveyards. You want to be forcing the enemy team to come to you to give you that advantage. So we're going to be going right in this instance. The enemy warrior is going to try and jump to get our orange orb, but thankfully our warrior picks it up first. I end up missing my tremor totem on the fear, so I do have to blow my trinket there. It does suck, but again, that's one of those microplay errors that I made. I do end up getting a tremor on that my control, though it's cool. Now, something really good that our druid did. I know this is focusing on me mainly, not my teammates, but my druid was able to get the blue orb, drop down, and grab the shield. At the time of making this video, the shield buff was actually way overtuned. It's been nerfed since, but he's looking very good right now in that position. We do get a kill on the green orb carrier, and so now I will be looking to either stun or purge the purple orb carrier just so that we can get that reset and see if we can get some more orbs on the board to further our advantage. And it does look like I was able to get a lightning lasso and a purge on him earlier, but the next thing I should be doing is looking to my teammates, who are my orb carriers and what are their health pools like, to focus my healing accordingly. Throwing out some heals right now, as my warrior's just taking the absolute deep dish, I end up trading out the Spirit Link Totem. If you're a Resto Shaman player and there's really high stacks, don't do what I did. That's generally a mistake, and you will kill your whole team. But it's very standard, at least from a healer POV. What all I'm trying to do right now is peel for my orb carriers, keep them alive for as long as possible, try not to completely blow all my cooldowns if they get too high of stacks, and if need be, I can go and pick up an orb. So we're doing pretty well. We're keeping our orb carriers up. You know, we're at 300 points on the board right now. Let me go ahead and close out that menu. We get the dispel on our monk, but he gets remind controlled. And because of that lack of healing, our orb carriers are going to die. They did a very good job though in the opener. And what I do is I go over to the shield buff and I grab the shield buff because I anticipate myself carrying the blue orb next. I am racing against this enemy warrior to try and get it. He trinkets, I knock, he charges, I pan to him, and neither of us get the orb because my monk goes and picks up the blue orb. Very good job on him for recognizing that window of opportunity. Additionally, my monk is pinging the orange orb, signifying that that can get picked up at any moment, and a druid stops me before I'm able to really convert any of that pressure. Looks like one of our teammates there in the druid takes advantage of that, picks up the orange orb, and we're back to business. Now we have three orbs on the board. It looks like we've won every team fight so far, so we are going to want to be playing to control this middle area while holding three orbs, guaranteeing us about 24 points per tick. Uh, if all three of the orbs are in the middle, we don't exactly get that. Sometimes we get 22 if there's two orbs in the middle and one orb on the side. Again, all I'm doing as a healer right now is just peeling for my orb carriers, making sure that we're getting our max points. And keeping my team up so that we can consistently win team fight after team fight after team fight. I make a big mistake here when it comes to macro play. And this is, I picked up the shield buff, which gives a shield that is 50% of my health. And again, at this point during the recording time, this was bugged and gave way more health than it intended to. But issue is, I am not a kill target. I have three allies on the board that are all carrying orbs and this shield buff could be a lot more beneficial to any of the three of them. It did not appear as though any enemy was going to take that shield buff so I essentially made a big error which will cost us big time when it comes to my teammates. Orange is going to go down and green goes down. So now every orb is available to be picked up. We were able to trade out for purple, so we still do have two orbs on the board. And this is where I believe I'm going for green. Yeah. Okay, so this is my first time going for green, and I have no mana. So I have to go outside for a little bit. I've got to go get the leaf, try to regenerate as much mana as I can, and then keep myself alive for as long as possible. But... Unfortunately, I get caught on the wrong side of the map. This is the side that is closer to the Horde graveyards, and I'm surrounded by five people. I try my best to get to the middle of the map, but unfortunately I do go down. I do stay alive though for longer than two ticks, and then I start to, I believe, call out in chat um, what orbs are coming up next. People tend to think if you're dead, you just kind of sit there and wait, but when you do die, when you are waiting in the graveyard to respawn, you should be thinking about your next move. 
because this game is consistently flowing. There is no stop and go. There is no breathing. Even if you are out of the game temporarily, it's important to plan on what your next move is going to be. And I actually start to go orange, but our warrior ends up picking it up. Again, we have three orbs on the board. We are looking very pretty right now. I see that my Mistweaver has an orb, so I don't want to be the one to pick up another orb myself. Now we have four. And it's just a matter of maintaining a lead. As you see, we're not super pressured to go into the middle. There's a lot of people from the enemy team. I think you can count five or six people from the enemy team all in the middle right here. Our orb carriers are able to use these pillars of line of sight, especially right here. You see our warrior carrying the orange orb. Let me go ahead and rewind this here. Again, as you can see, a few more seconds pass. The enemy team is just blindly PvEing into us. Our warrior is still sitting pretty behind this little ledge right here in the middle, getting eight points per tick. While their boomkin is getting less points because he's on the upper half of those stairs. He's out in the open. He's very easily exposed. And we're just dominating this team fight scenario. So skipping ahead here, they do get our orb carriers down just because the stacks get so high to where they're unhealable. We see green goes down and I end up going for the green orb. Now I'm playing against three different people that are trying to stop me from getting to the orb. I do have to sit the full poly, but I do know that the mage can only carry one orb at a time. So realistically, the only person I have to stop is the dragon to get to the orb. I do make a really good micro play here and I'm able to capitalize on that by getting the orb before. Now I'm in a bit of a scary situation because I am taking a ton of damage and I just have to keep myself alive for one more tick for it to be worth it. I'm able to fall down in the middle here and I'm totally able to convert this play into a worthwhile play and not have it accidentally throw for my team. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of very big cooldowns that were popped on me there as an orb carrier, so I will go down. But the good news is, is that we are less than 100 points from winning and we are able to easily close this game out. I think we end up winning basically right as I respawn. We've got two orbs, both in the middle, both at 16 points a second. We win on the next tick and there it is. And now granted, this is 1600 MMR. It is just a very standard average middle of the road lobby. This isn't the highest MMR you'll ever see. And I'm sure that as the lobbies become more refined, when you climb up the ladder, you'll find teams making less mistakes in the macro play department and things will come a lot more down to micro play and team synergy. That being said, that'll go ahead and do it for this guide. I hope you were able to get some useful information out of it that can help your decision making when it comes to playing Battleground Blitz. And if you do enjoy this style of content, it would mean a lot if you could support the channel. But that'll do it for now. Remember to vote in the community post for what map you'd like to see me cover next. And until next time, this is Moon, signing out.